Hi, it's Katrina. From strange underwater rock formations to sound technology that was far ahead of its time, here are eight mysterious ancient structures. Luckily, slowly but surely, archaeologists are uncovering more and more secrets. Number 8. Monte de Acodi Sardinia is a large island in the Mediterranean famous for its beautiful beaches and pristine waters. Not many people know that it is also the home of a Neolithic site that poses more questions than answers. The ruins were discovered in 1954 on property owned by the politically prestigious Segni family and consist of a massive stone structure thought to have been used as an altar. It was built sometime between 4000 and 3650 BC by the Otsieri culture, or perhaps even an earlier civilization. The site went through many changes while it was active. Around 3000 BC, archaeologists found evidence that a fire caused significant damage, and the temple was either destroyed or abandoned. Then, in 2800 BC, the remains of the original structure were paved over using a mixture of earth and stone, and a new platform was established using large blocks of limestone. A 10-meter high step pyramid was erected on top of the new platform. At the onset of the Neuragic Age, around 1800 BC, Monte de Acodi was permanently abandoned. Several other cryptic stone carvings and structures were excavated nearby during the 1960s, including a megalithic tomb known as a dolmen and the possible remains of residential buildings. The remains of sheep, cattle, and swine were found at the site, indicating that at some point it was used for animal sacrifice. It is one of the oldest known sacrificial sites in Western Europe and has helped researchers learn about the establishment of rituals in the prehistoric world. The structures at Monte de Acodi may have also been used as an ancient astronomical observatory. However, the full story behind the site's construction and use is still being pieced together. Number 7. Gosek Circle Located on farmland in Gosek, Germany, the Gosek Circle is an early Neolithic structure known as a ring ditch and is believed to be the oldest of the circular enclosures of the Central European Neolithic Age. How's that? Radiocarbon dating shows that it was built by Europe's first civilization sometime during the 49th century BC and was used until the 47th century BC, long before the societies of ancient Egypt or Mesopotamia existed, earning it the modern-day nickname of German Stonehenge. The people who built Gosek Circle were called the Stroke Ornamented Ware Culture and were named after pottery fragments they left behind. Little else is known about this civilization, including what they looked like or what their language was like. Gosek Circle was first discovered in modern times during an aerial survey that was being conducted by inspectors from the German government in 1991. At the time, they simply noticed a circular ridge beneath a field, and for the next 12 or so years, no one really paid any attention. In 2002, after archaeologists realized that Gosek Circle was not a simple fortification like they had previously assumed, a major excavation ensued. They quickly noticed that its entrances are aligned with the sunrise and sunset of the winter solstice, suggesting that the structure may have been the world's first solar observatory. During the dig, they not only found evidence of prehistoric stargazing, but of ritual sacrifice, including headless human skeletons, decapitated oxen, bones containing cut marks, and the remnants of fires. Researchers determined that the original site was 75 meters in diameter and consisted of two wooden fences, a mound, and four concentric circles. Despite the initial lack of interest in Gosek Circle, it's now one of the most thoroughly studied ring ditches out of the 250 that are known to exist throughout Germany, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, and the Czech Republic. Number 6. Bimini Road In the waters off the Bahamian island of North Bimini, there's an underwater rock formation known as the Bimini Road, or the Bimini Wall. At first glance, the half-mile-long arrangement of rectangular and sub-rectangular limestone blocks appears to be man-made. There have been several theories about what the stretch of blocks actually is. Experts have speculated that it's a road, a wall, a breakwater, or a pier from an ancient civilization. But if so, then which one? The formation was discovered in 18-foot deep water by three divers in 1968. Since then, it has been visited by a variety of experts, including anthropologists, marine engineers, geologists, and archaeologists. A lot of people hoped, or even believed, that the Bimini Road was a remnant of the lost city of Atlantis. This turned out to be wishful thinking in more than one way. The first bit of disappointing news came when the scientific community decided that the Bimini Road was formed naturally and is not, in fact, man-made. While the stones seemed to have been assembled deliberately, there were no signs of this having actually been the case. 
Additionally, carbon dating failed to yield any indicators that the stones were anything but naturally occurring. And I'm kind of sad to say this, but mounting evidence over the years has caused many, if not most, credible researchers to cast doubt on Atlantis having ever existed, or in some cases, to outright dismiss it as a myth. So, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it looks like the Bimini Road is a natural formation, and it looks like the scientific community is also doubting Atlantis was real. Number 5. The Stones at Galilee in the summer of 2003, an enormous structure was detected during a sonar survey of the southwestern portion of the Sea of Galilee, and divers were summoned to check it out. When they got a closer look, they observed a cone-shaped cairn, or a monument that was built by piling rocks on top of one another. The basalt structure measured about 32 feet high, with a diameter of 230 feet, making it taller than even the tallest stones at Stonehenge and twice the diameter of the outer circle at the famous ruin site. While structures like this have been found in other parts of the world and sometimes represent burial sites, experts aren't quite sure what this one was for. Elements of the investigation and research were covered in a 2013 issue of the International Journal of Nautical Archaeology. Although the stones showed no signs of having been altered with tools and were assembled without a detectable construction method, the researchers concluded that the structure is man-made. They also believe it was built on land and was later consumed by rising sea levels. There's a lot left to learn about the monument, including when it was built and by whom. Researchers believe it may be at least 4,000 years old. Finding more artifacts at the site would be helpful for determining its age, but until a thorough excavation is carried out, even the experts can do little more than speculate. Number 4. The Yonaguni Monument The Yonaguni Monument is a mysterious sandstone rock formation located on the seabed of the waters off Yonaguni, Japan. Whether the monument is man-made or natural has been a source of debate ever since its discovery in 1968 by a director from the Yonaguni Cho Tourism Association named Kihachiro Aratake. He was out exploring the waters looking for hammerhead sharks. Following the discovery, the site was visited by a group of scientists led by Masaki Kimura, a professor and marine biologist. After diving and exploring the site for more than 15 years, Kimura held tight to his belief that the giant submerged rocks represent the ruins of a so-called Japanese Atlantis that was sunk into the ocean by an earthquake around 2,000 years ago. According to a National Geographic article from 2007, Kimura had only become more convinced over time that he was studying the remains of a 5,000-year-old once bustling urban center. Kimura's claims have been criticized by some experts, including a professor of mathematics and science at Boston University named Robert Scotch, who has visited the site firsthand and remains convinced that it's a naturally formed set of rocks. Scotch believes that features of the rocks that cause them to appear man-made to some people, such as their straight edges, can be explained by natural phenomena, such as the tendency for sandstone to break along an even plane. The general consensus appears to be on the side of Mr. Scotch, at least as far as official opinions go. Yonaguni is not recognized as a culturally or historically significant site by the government of Okinawa Prefecture or the government's Agency for Cultural Affairs, a stance that was made clear in 2007 by the agency's then-spokeswoman, Emiko Ishida. But maybe, just maybe, the skeptics and naysayers are wrong. After all, it's unlikely that a man as educated as Masaki Kimura would believe so strongly that he'd found something of value that was, in fact, essentially worthless. Or so one would think. It wouldn't be the first time the scientific community would be wrong, like when they said the boiling river in the Amazon didn't exist either. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 3. The Kingdom of Great Zimbabwe One of Africa's oldest and most stunning archaeological sites, known as the Great Zimbabwe Ruins, was built 900 years ago and is home to a collection of massive stone complexes. The 1800-acre site is located in southeastern Zimbabwe, most of the buildings were made from granite using an advanced masonry technique called dry stonewalling. The ancient city took around 300 years to build, and at its peak boasted around 18,000 inhabitants. Great Zimbabwe was also probably a royal city that was used as a palace by the monarch. Others have theorized that the buildings were separated into three groups because they had different purposes, with the hill possibly serving as the temple, the great enclosure as housing for royalty, and the valley as a residential complex. The artifacts that have been excavated at Great Zimbabwe have helped archaeologists learn what they can about the people who live there. Among the things they've uncovered are soapstone carvings, pottery, gold jewelry, decorative ivory, and iron gongs. The city was eventually abandoned, but nobody knows why. Number 2. Hal Safliani Hypogeum 
The Halsafliani Hypogeum, or the Hypogeum for short, can be found in the modern-day Maltese town of Paola. In Greek, Hypogeum means underground, which is an appropriate name for this Neolithic subterranean temple and necropolis. The Hypogeum was actively used from 4000 BC to 2500 BC, making it the world's oldest known prehistoric underground temple. It was discovered in 1902 when construction workers accidentally cut through the roof. In 1991, after nearly 90 years of failed on and off preservation attempts, the site closed for a decade for renovations. The Hypogeum is now open to the public and is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The temple contains three levels, all of which are carved out of stone. Scientists have uncovered the remains of over 7,000 people in the uppermost level, which contains large burial chambers. Not surprisingly, the site is also rumored to be a hotspot for paranormal activity. The arguably most fascinating feature of the Hypogeum is its incredible acoustic technology, which can be experienced on its lowest level in an area known as the Oracle Chamber. The Oracle Chamber was carved almost entirely out of limestone. When a person uses their voice in there, they can be heard throughout the entire Hypogeum. So don't start screaming or anything. Number 1. The Structure at McDonald Lake in 2005, divers working on a submarine project in Ontario's Lake McDonald discovered a bizarre assemblage of heavy stones that they initially assumed was a geological formation. At the bottom of the lake, an elongated rock weighing around 1,000 pounds sat on top of seven baseball-sized stones. Although the rock formation didn't seem to be the product of human creativity at first, one thing did stand out about it. Unlike the rounded rocks that had been weathered by glaciers, the structure's massive top piece had straight, even edges and was flat. An underwater archaeologist took a closer look and determined that the monument was, in fact, man-made. Pretty much everything else about it, including who made it and why, remains a mystery. No tools or other artifacts have been recovered from nearby. The biggest clues are the thick layer of silt covering the rocks indicating that they haven't been touched in an extremely long time. There was a drought that occurred in North America sometime during 9000 and 7000 BC, which lowered the water levels of the lake, a logical window of time for when the stone structure may have been built. Very few people lived in the area at the time, which only deepens the mysteries surrounding the strange monument's origins. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. There's more where that came from. See you next time.